to apply for primary teaching, you have to go through UCAS. Don't waste a choice, though. It's really, really important that you research every single entry requirement. Can I just say, if it says 280 points, it means 280 points. It doesn't mean, oh, I've got 260, it doesn't matter, that's fine. It means you're going to get rejected if you're not predicted 280 points. If it says 300, likewise. So if you put down a choice of an institution that's 300 points and you've only got predicted 280, then you're going to get rejected. Similarly, some institutions accept ASs, some don't. Some include in that points general studies, some don't. Some will take piano teaching exams, etc. It's really important that you don't waste one of those five choices. It's such a, com a competitive uh, course to be applying for. This is a government requirement. You must have your GCSE, English, Maths and Science, Grade C or above. Now, some institutions have moved to a B. Again, if you've only got C's and the institution wants a B, you're going to get a rejection. So, research it. Most institutions now expect it to be prior to your application that you have those GCSEs in place. So, if you haven't, then you need to perhaps find choices where they are or look into equivalence tests at the institutions. Some institutions will expect a national curriculum subject, especially perhaps that there's a specialism with English or a specialism with maths or science as part of their programme. Most universities, again, it's down to the research, accept alternative qualifications like your BTEC, your cash diploma, your international or your Welsh baccalaureate, access courses. And of course, as a, on the back of the access courses, mature students are considered. Now, this was a new thing that came into requirement for entry for 2013. And this is perhaps something you really need to take note of. Schools didn't, schools didn't get hold of the information early enough last year. Institutions didn't. The government was still making decisions about it September, October. But this is one of the reasons why you have to get your application forms in early. There's an English and a maths test for qualified teacher set status that you have to now complete prior to starting your course. OK? Now, you get three chances at it. And if you fail it, you can't apply for teacher training for a further two years after that final fail. So it's important now that if you really, really want to go into primary teaching or teaching, it applies to secondary as well. If you really want to go into teaching, now's a good time to think, OK, I'll do a bit of research about this and start revising. If you certainly if you haven't done any maths since GCSE, you might want to do a little bit of work on it. Go back to your schools or colleges and say, look, I'm planning on going into teaching. I know I've got to do the skills tests. Are you, putting, are you letting people sit in on GCSE lessons or anything so that I can de-rustify my knowledge from GCSE? Your first attempt's free, and the next two are about £20 each currently. Now. Some institutions are expecting you to have passed those skills tests before you attend interview. Some are saying you must have at least booked it. OK, because the last thing we want to do is say, oh, give you an offer, and then you go and fail it round about July, because then that impacts on our recruitment. So again, if you go on that education.gov.uk, and I'll just get it back up again here for you, there, on the right, skills tests. OK, if you click on there, it's everything you need to know. You can't do them now. You can revise for them now. You can only take them when you have registered with UCAS. You've got to have your UCAS number to register for the tests, which is why you've got to get in early. Most institutions start interviewing around about November. Now, if that institution wants you to have passed your skills test, and you're going round universities in October and don't get your form until December or January, you've got your form in quick, but then you might not be able to take your skills test till February, March, depending on the volume or uh, where the centre is. So that's why I'm saying it's important to get it in early. 
What that will do on that website, you'll click on it, shows where all the local centres are. It's just like booking your driving theory test. You book, you go along, and you take it online. Okay. In terms of the application process itself, when you're researching into your institutions, you will find that different institutions have different points. And that isn't to say, oh, well, that one must be a fantastic course because that's 300 points, and that one must be rubbish because it's 260. That's not what, how it works. Basically, the points usually link to the amount of applicants and the amount of places there are on offer. People can put higher points, obviously, if they're getting a high number of applications, but they've only got a small number of places to fill. Most universities nationally are getting about 10 applications to each place for their primary teaching. And this is where I'll indulge a bit and give you a John Moores figure. At Liverpool John Moores University, we had last year, or this year that's currently recruiting, 1,300 applications for our 55 places. Okay, so that's very, very competitive. So that's why we expect 300 points. Now, going back to what I said about research, approximately 600 of those were rejected because they didn't have the right points or the right GCSEs in place. So all those 600 people wasted one choice, which is a bit of a shame. So what I would say is research and apply to where you know you meet the minimum requirements. I only get the forms as an admissions tutor, and this is pretty much how it works with every institution, once administrators have checked all your qualifications, and then I look at your personal statement. On, on every single website linked to the degree, it will tell you, just like any job application, what we want to see. So it will say, we would like the following essential evidence and then you'll have to look at it and what I would advise you to do is get your five universities get your five print-offs highlight what they want write your personal statement and check and match to those five because if you find on one of the institutions that they it's really essential that you have evidence of work in the community and your personal statement hasn't got that it's highly likely then you're not going to be called for interview at that institution. And that's a great exercise. Get other people to read your personal statements, because sometimes there might be mistakes that you haven't noticed. Work experience needs to be evidence on this personal statement. And again, every institution has a minimum requirement. Usually, it's recent. That means within the last two years. So if you haven't been anywhere near a school since your year 10 work experience, you now need to be thinking about how you can get some experience now or else from, from September onwards, perhaps if you're dropping a subject, you might be able to make an afternoon in school. Yeah, when it says two weeks experience, it doesn't always mean in a block. Major piece of, of interesting fact is quite often people will say, oh, well, I didn't know that, and I didn't do that because I thought that bit was OK. All you have to do is phone up the institution or email them and say, this is my situation, can you please advise me? I'm doing an afternoon a week in school, is that OK? Will that add up to, to two weeks? If you phone us, we'll say, yes, that's absolutely fine. If you phone another institution, they might say, oh, no, we expect it in a block. So again, just make that phone call or that email, and you've got it in writing then. Okay. Some people expect evidence actually linked to a school. Some institutions will expect community work, perhaps work with brownies, etc. on top of that. If you're applying for primary and you've only got secondary experience, then again, you need to look at that and see whether that will be accepted. If you write in your personal statement, I really write babysitting and I, and I quite often play school with my younger brothers or sisters, that's really not going to be evidence enough. It has to be related to a school. It might be a little bit of, of your personal statement in terms of you evidencing how you've got your love for teaching grew, but I wouldn't focus too much on it. What you say in your personal statement and how you say it will show that you've researched your career choice really, really well. 
So, if I'm looking at a personal statement, what will I now do? Well, what I will do is exactly what I said before. I've got set criteria, and I look at it on the screen, and I check that it meets those four or five criteria. And if there's any non-ticked, then they're not successful in being called for an interview. And I'm sure that's pretty much how most institutions will work based on the sheer volume. Make sure that your specific assessment criteria, you, ch ch you check those out, because I've talked about that. You must show a clear focus to primary teaching. Okay? Particularly if you're going to apply for us or anyone else with the smaller programmes. Every single year, I get people who hedge their bets. 